Yeah, does that look good? Yeah, I don't looks so. good. So what I wanted to do is to have a bit more of an interactive thing with you guys. So to me, it's a little bit of a conversation piece. I'm not just going to stand up there and go yada, yada, yada. Um, I want to hear from you. How many people have ever entered Naha? Okay, great. Entered Naha, the awards, yeah? How many would like to? Great, that's what it's all about. Whether you've entered or whether you're not, whether you're a novice, or you're a seasonal professional, it really doesn't matter. We're going to be talking a lot about the entries. I don't want to spend a lot of my time really talking about the office. You can go onto the website, and if you haven't checked it out, we'd urge you to do that. It has all the incredible categories. It has the rules and regulations of what you're looking for. But I really want to kind of think of what do we think when we're talking about imagery, yeah? And when we're talking about what makes a great idea, and everybody is creative, yeah? So, um, for those of you who missed our presentation earlier this morning, we do have some of our models that we had. We also have some professional models that earn a living in front of the camera. So I'm going to get them to enact and kind of be res uh, responsive in the sense of picking ideas. So, I think that there's many ways of being a great at a hairdresser. There's more to just colouring hair, there's more to just cutting hair. I think it's a whole kind of entity. A person that I work with in a huge amount that really brings a lot of life to what I do. When people look at a Dehi Khani image, I have a brand and an identity to it. When you look at a Vidal Sassoon image, they have their look. When they have Tony and Guy, they got their look. Who are you? What do you want to be and where do you want to go is entirely up there. So to my point, I'm going to bring on a person who's going to do some demonstration of live colour for you. You're going to see her before and then at the end of the program she's going to be brought back and you're going to see her colour in total. She's the wonderful, incredible Miss Sue Pemberton! Thank you! Good afternoon, everyone. I don't know what Damien just said, but I'm just going to start talking. <laughs> because I like to talk. Um, what, I, what I decided to do in the classroom is to actually do some real colour for you guys. And because we have an hour and a half... Okay, we like to talk to um, I want to talk about men. How many of you have shot men for? There's a, a cap you can enter men in some of your categories, yeah? Fashion in, in the Naha Awards is from the top of the head to full length. So the first thing you probably won't want to be sure shooting a dwarf. Yeah? Because their proportions in a lens of a camera will not match and aesthetically look balanced. When I'm at a model call and I'm working with a photographer, or if I'm doing a commercial, my background basically to recap, I've done runway, done Dior, done all of these things, I've worked with Vogue, Elle, all the big photographers, not all the big photographers, I've worked with rubbish to whatever. But the reality is you've got to have a concept. And when you meet with a photographer or you're working on your plan of action, you've got to go back to your concept. If somebody's proportion as a model here, if you're doing full length, is out of balance with the legs and everything else, or the boobs of the bum, everything's going to be distorted. Of course, you can use Photoshop, which basically can kind of be tweaked. The more Photoshop you do, the more fake your images will look. When I do working with Sue, her hair color is never tweaked. Never. What you see with the human eye, and when you look at the image on the computer or through your camera, is pretty much 99.9% .9 true. Now, in Photoshop, you can tweak the colors, and you can, if you've got a copper there, you can go to the red slide and make the copper more and more advanced. To me, that's not quite the thing, yeah? But there are certain rules in the avant-garde ones, everybody, where you can go full whack with everything. You can have a girl with one leg and one ear because it's avant-garde, yeah? But I think the reality is, what you see is what you should try and t t tend to keep true. For guys, I think you've got to have an interest. The average guy who's your brother, your uncle, or somebody else that you felt, you know, you, you met at McDonald's, ain't going to cut it unless you look at it. Because most models are actually found at McDonald's. Even all the supermodels were, Kate Moss was, so blah, blah, blah. So what I'm looking at when I'm looking at a guy's face is basically primarily very different and the opposite. And this goes into my clientele as well as outside photo shoves. Strong jaw. He's got to have something that basically is going to catch the camera. Now, if you look at your face, do you mind if I look straight, to, straight, straight out here? Okay. Then what I do is, is I scan from here to here. And what I'm doing is looking at any irregular. In fact, actually, what you see with the human eye, he translates very well on video. See? Can you see how that theory works? Actually, looks even cuter on camera than he does in real life to me. Yeah? Would you girls agree? Yeah. Would you guys agree? Yeah? So, some people are born, you know, they kind of have that photographic thing. So, remember, you know, most models, when you kind of see them when I go to a casting, so I'm going to step down here a little bit because of the light, they will look naturally very skinny. Like, almost, 
border and anorexia. When you shoot them, they look a bit fuller. That's why most people, when they're on video or a shot, they will fill out a little bit more. Hence, most models eat lettuce and don't eat for days. Not all of them. But then they have to look sickly. So when I'm looking at it, I'm also looking around my model and looking at the proportions of how you, the photographer, is going to shoot it. Because if one person looks this way, then it looks very different from what you're looking here. Yeah? Key thoughts, my tips are, if you shoot in fashion, if the hair is too small, then you're going to lose your proportion, because the body's going to take over. But there's no general rule of thumb of that, you can have a small shape. But maybe if there's a full length, you might want to have a bit more volume. The closer you go in, the more compact that you have. If the nose is slightly bent, it will look even like that on the camera. Does that make sense? If an ear is this big, it will look like that in the camera. So it amplifies it. Now, you can straighten the nose, and you can make the ears a little bit smaller, but you can't reconstruct the face that much, because then it becomes really, really fake. Is that cool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to me, I think he has a kind of a very cool vibe to him. I like the way that he doesn't have facial hair. He's not very hairy, except down here. <laughs> yeah? So if you look at what's very cool at the moment, when you're looking at imagery and inspiration, look at magazines, particularly like V Magazine, Pop Magazine, Italian Vogue, all those kind of things. All the boys are actually prettier than the girls at the moment. Facial hair is a really a minimum. They're very clean cut, yeah? So I like his kind of texture and everything. He has defined eyebrows. Obviously, if you pull the head back, then you're going to make the face shape look much more stronger. He would be a great guy for, you know, selling wax. Yeah. Or, you know, if you kind of style the hair back through there, you would look like, you know, like a cool kind of Versace guy. Does that make sense? Could you strike a pose for me so you take your picture taken? Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> so you say that to some models and it's the same thing. I need you to look fierce. Can you do something with your arms? Without a pocket, please. Anything. <laughs> Tilt your head as if you have your picture taken. The camera's right there. Yeah, see? See how it kind of snapped into the mood? So men's kind of that kind of point of view. With his haircut, his haircut's been graduated, there's lots of length through it. I like the fact that there's length through here. So as an artist, what you can do is, your hands are the best tool that you can have in a, in a, in a photo shoot. Do not put too much product in through the hair because it's going to show, yeah? So any hairspray or any wax is going to amplify. So what I do is I layer a bit, a layer a bit, and layer a bit. Just like you do when you get your skin and your foundation. But to me, the difference of doing this and stopping and shooting that can be really amazing. Can you see? Yeah? So it's those slight nuances that to me I think are really, really important. So I think that looks great. Um, again, you know, what is your guy going to be wearing? What's he looking like? What's your message? It could be pretty, it could be gay, it could be butch, it could be whatever. But, you know, just doesn't always have to always look ultra handsome. You know Diesel, the brand? Yeah, or Levi's. They have this kind of people that look like real people, but they could be models, but they're not models. So they don't always have to do that. We're going to be talking a little bit about that a little bit later on. He would be great in one of my entries um, in my master stylist where I have to have five images and I'd like to include a man. Uh, a guy in my kind of collection. But what would Damien Carney do to this? Well, he would kind of do this, and basically that would be my image. But it's all over his eye. That's my Damien Carney signature. So you're going to own your image, you're going to own your brand. You cannot please everybody. You have to find your soul, and we're going to talk more and more about that. Is that cool, guys? Yeah. yeah. Are there any questions so far? Because I love, love questions. What's the question, my love? What inspires you? Oh, that's a great question. Why don't you go down there? This inspires me. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's many things. It depends. I think when you, you wake up, I don't think that um, creativity, if you control it too much, can often look too forced. Fashion's an obvious thing, isn't it? If you're not aware of what goes on in fashion, then your images and your looks aren't going to look current. The people that are walking the streets, architecture, music, they're all obvious things. But I think what I hopefully have with what I see with my work is I don't look the way that everybody looks at the same subject. I try and get outside the subject and look at something in a different perspective. If you go to a museum, you know what does... And then I went back into the uh, copper and yellow, vertically. And then on the fringe area, I've worked diagonal, I've done two yellow, two orange, two purple, and then three blue. And then I thought, I was going to work vertical here, and then I thought... Really, as Sue has done this, notice how the hair is taken away, and then basically what you do is you get more of the cheekbone area and everything else. This girl has incredible eyes, yeah? So those are the kind of facial features that we're going to kind of look at. I'm going to basically, when Sue's finished this, we're going to go through some valuable information that you might want to jot down. And by the way, how many of you on Facebook? 
It's great. How many of you are my friends? Because I don't have any. <laughs> Very lonely. So, why don't you tap onto me on Facebook, stylist411, behindthechair.com, and those are great resources. Years ago, I had to travel to get that information. And a click of a button, a coffee, and a little bit on your computer, and you can have access to all of those great things. Where do you get ideas from? Go to photographers' websites, makeup websites, and you can get lots and lots of concepts that basically are going to kind of work through there. How are we doing, Sue? That looks We're good. great. OK, so I'm done, basically. Um, again, on one side, I've gone vertically, working with the got, uh, yellow into the gold. On the top, I've gone from gold, copper, pink to blue. And I decided I'd do horizontal on this side so you can see the difference of how the colours are going to look, depending on how I place it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send them backstage, and I will have somebody go through, and they will check these foils for me, because you should always cross-check your foils. Even when you put lighter on, I always open up the foil, or is to see, make sure it's lifted even, um, on the colours penetrating, and it's doing what I want it to do. Um, so that will have somebody do that for me. Cool, so, it looks great. I just want to say a few things. For your colour category, you do need a before shot. And a lot of trade magazines, if you want to get exposure, love to have sometimes the step-by-steps of your techniques, yeah? So I think that looks pretty even with the foils. It's good to keep it stunning when you finish. So, brilliant, you're free to go. And then what we're going to do is, is we have some, some more things that we're going to go to PowerPoint now. We want to recap on um, getting into kind of the planning of what we would do when we're going to kind of do a shoot. So if we can have PowerPoint, that would be great. And I'm going to kind of come down here. You okay, sir? Yeah. Cool. Working at whether it's these models here. Observe the face shape, strive to achieve the oval face shape, which is basically considered the perfect face shape because there's no predominant facial feature that upsets another. You may have long, square noses, eyes, all those kind of things. Focus on the positive, illuminate, uh, downplay on the weaker. Cut and style are always complement all features. That's why Sue and I work together well, because I hopefully give her 100% of a haircut. She does 100% of a colour. To me, that's more than if I could cope with doing all the cut and colour on my own. Would you agree? Yeah. So it's not always, but some people like to own the whole thing. Is that right, sir? Yeah. So basically what I like to do, the five things I consider before I start colouring, um, skin tone and eye colour. Well, not really skin tone, but I'll put that in there because it's something I want to talk about. Ideally, it's eye colour. And my tip is, if somebody has blue eyes or British coloured eyes, you do cool colours. If somebody has green and gold and brown eyes, they should have warmer colours. Um, the whole skin tone thing, to me, is really irrelevant. Um, the only time you get into problems with skin tone is if you go too, over two levels lighter or two levels darker. Then you're going to get into issues of skin tone. Okay. So, um, what I believe is, if I'm going more than two levels lighter and skin tone is an issue, then I would make sure around the face is the colour the client should wear, or the model should wear. So that I'm keeping around the perimeter what her skin tone should be, two levels lighter, two levels darker. I can do whatever I want up here, just like I'm going to do on my... And sometimes, I'll tell you this, when I do a photo shoot, I walk into a photo shoot and I have my ideas, of I'm going to do these shades here and these shades here and it comes to pre-lighting and yes I can lift her if I want her hair to drop off right I can always get her there if I want it in a bag on the floor but if I want to keep remaining her hair I've got to stop lightening at a stage because the hair's not getting me there so I have to change my plan right depending on how it's lifting so that's important um, this is very important, and is it can the model, the client, wear it, carry it? So, for example, um, Damien talks about this in his younger days. Um, you do this beautiful colour on, on a client or a model, and she gets up and walks, and she just isn't that type of person, right? So maybe you've done something fun, but she's a classy person, or maybe she, you've done something classy, but she's more of a fun person. So that's really important. Can that model carry the look you're going to deliver. And in my experience in the past, when I first started doing uh, platform work, I used to do all these beautiful colours, bright colours and all that good stuff, and it just didn't look right because it was on the wrong. The total picture wasn't right. So yeah, I have to consider that. Um, I think it's very important whether I'm doing a model or a client, the maintenance of the colour. And what I mean about this is number one, rinsing. And number two, um, 
retouching it, etc. So maybe I want to do zones. Where am I going to put my zones of colour? Let's say, for example, I'm doing bleach, blonde and black. Right? I would definitely want to put the light on top so that when I'm rinsing, the black's not going into the lap, as opposed to putting the black, the you know, the blonde underneath, and then I'm rinsing, it's just going to turn grey. So you've got to consider that. Um, what do I do? Oh yeah, my end result. What is my message? What is my inspiration? First you have to be inspired to create, and then I always have a message. My message today is you can do vertical or you can do horizontal. <laughs> it's your choice. Because you know what? This head of hair or that head of hair you're working on is a canvas and you're the artist. So, question in the audience, where do you get ideas? These are just obvious things that you can go to. To me, stop. I'm doing pictures because I'm building a brand. And building a brand, and whether that's your brand as a salon owner, whether it's you as an individual, that picture is going to go somewhere. When you're entering into your Nama, you're getting recognition from such an incredible competition that is great. It helps you to push boundaries that you never ever thought existed. It allows you to see your work in a very different light. Because looking through here is very different from looking from here. As I work with people or clients in concepts, I need to understand that kind of thing. So here, we're going to look at typically, very quickly, the creative process when we're kind of looking at what we're doing when we're kind of looking at inspiration. And here really, there's a whole montage of different things. These are my thoughts. I love V Magazine, or V Man, because it tends to be a raw magazine that is very edgy and very driven. It is not American Vogue, it's not um, L Magazine, so it's going to be the best of the best. The best photographers, the best models, what's hot, what's not, and everything else. I look at Pat, okay, Jaw Runway. Out of his team, I was the only one that could do those finger waves. And thank God I learned that at beauty school. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was the hero, this little boy. But anyway, the point being is you never need, you never know when you're going to tap into something that may not be relevant from something from the past. I think steal from the past, mix it in, but always make it always completely look new, different, and make it work for whoever you're working on. For me, when I do my, when I try to get cre creative, not try, but when I get creative or want to inspire myself, when I go through magazines, I just go through it really fast, I flip through it, and then something stops me, and when it stops me, I tear it out. I don't know why it stops me, it just does. Right? It could be an advertisement for household bleach, but it's, there's something in there. Yeah, no. um, and then what happens is I kind of put the tears out on the floor, and then I look what the connection is. And the connection might be orange and purple. Oh, I guess that's what I'm into. <laughs> right? Um, so that's how I do it. Uh, but I also get it from art and other places too. And it's quite interesting if you're having an idea with your look. How many people have opened up a salon? Great. When you did a, a concept with a designer and everything, you had a plan of action, it was much better, wasn't it? Yeah? If you kind of open up the door and hopefully it's all going to come together, it will fall apart. So storyboard is very, very vital. Here you've got one that represents the style, that's the wardrobe. Maybe the certain body poses, the feel, is it sexy like Sue says, is it goth? What kind of clients do you want bringing back into the salon when these pictures are coming back? If you're trying to attract new business, then have new imagery that's going to hopefully, you know, reinvent that for you, yeah? And it doesn't always have to be out there. The kind of lovely does here, we've got the past, and basically you've kind of got some runway. So if you show that to your team, it gets everybody creatively on a similar page, but don't let it limit you. That's basically why you're allowing your team to do all of that. A garage. I always do a dry run because when I do a dry run, it gives me confidence when I go into a shoot and when I speak with Sue, how it's going to work. It might be fake hair. These are all colour things that Sue's done. Do you like this? This is amazing. Where the colour goes from dark. That is just the long weft of hair that's been bleached. It's been wrapped about and I've moulded it on a head. I need to take that off and put that onto a real hair. I love the pale face actually. I think it was point of view. Because it may look great on somebody, but you've got to pre-plan it. It's a, it's a great buffer for me. Yeah? Is it good for you, Sue? Do you do that kind of thing? Um, for me, basically, I... No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Um, when, I'm, when I'm creating hair colour, I um, have a vision of what I want it to look like. I have an inspiration, and then I just do it um, on hair. Because my, it's easy for me because if you don't come out right, I can always make it brown. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little bit easier. So um, but, um, I heard this a long time ago 
very beginning of my career, it was something as in, you should have your own signature. Um, uh, people who sing have a signature, like Michael Jackson had a signature, Elvis Presley, people who are in bands, actors have a signature, and um, I decided that my signature was vibrant colours, because that's what I like. So I took something that I'm good at because I love doing vibrant colours and made it my signature. So I'm the vibrant colour girl. That's who I am. <laughs> okay, so you've done your images. These are the places that you need to drive more of your business to attract better staff, to attract new clients, give you your identity, sell your brand and so forth. And here, you know, if you're not on a lot of these, these are a lot of trade agencies, uh, sorry, uh, websites, and they're great ways of getting all of those access. If you're not signed up for those guys, I'd highly recommend. There's such great information now that's actually free. And obviously, tap into Pro Beauty, the eyes hair show here in Long Beach, where you get even more fabulous information. Don't forget to check out your Naha website. Our next slide. Cool. Retouching, here you can see basically on one side where the skin was shot that way and then it's been retouched. When I used to open up a magazine, I thought everybody had perfect skin. Nobody has perfect skin. Even the supermodels have different textures through their skin. So retouching is something you need to make sure that's polished off in your image. Next slide, please. Cool. Model agencies, looking for the right models. There are thousands of them there. Go to Google and Google model agencies in your area. You're going to get a lot of information. Go visit them, see them, tell them you want to shoot with them, and explain what you're going to do. Remember always to sign the model release, which gives you usage rights, okay? Next slide, cool. Okay, here we should have our presentation, because what I want to do is to show you some before shots and how the models have changed with what we've done with the hair. So we're going to have a presentation. So I think we wanted to kind of, did anybody do your hair backstage? Yes. Really? Okay, they did a very good job. <laughs> it looks a bit limp to me. Yeah? So, do we have a before shot? Is that what we wanted to do? That's the shot that was just done. Yeah, so, we can go back. up there, that's better. Cool. Brilliant. Yeah? So, actually, let's get into the spotlight. I know we're doing a bit of a change of plan, girls, be with us. Yeah? So, basically, what we've got through here is, is um, you know, she looks very, very pretty. Um, one thing that's very dominant on her face, um, can we go back to the slide, please? Um, one's very dominant on a facial feature is what? If there was one feature on that her face that was the most dominant thing, what would it be? No. Is it unattractive? No. No, I think it's actually beautiful. Yeah? So she's got a very strong nose, um, and in some cases, doesn't translate well, to, well on film. But for her, she does. She is a professional girl. Layering is usually one of the key you know, areas that basically you can kind of add a little bit of an area where you're going to get interest in texture. Obviously, Sue's added color, so it gives you lots of different options, look, that when you're shooting, sorry, I need to pretend I'm a camera. So, the demi or the permanent? Um, I always pre-lighten, um, depending on if she's got colour on her hair. And after pre-lighting, I use uh, three products, either a semi-permanent, which is what I use live, a uh, demi-permanent, because you can always deposit with demi, or I use a permanent colour with 10. Always 10 volume with permanent. Because when you use 10 volume with a permanent colour, it's almost like a demi anyway. Um, she has a uh, level 9 gold, which was a demi. She has a level 8 copper, which was a permanent, with 10. And then she has a semi. She has all three. <laughs> she has a semi. How do you decide that? How do I decide? Um, de depends. Uh, how do I decide what colours or whether I'm going to use demi or semi? Depends on the mood. Sorry? <laughs> Both. Both. Okay. Um, how do I start, decide what I want to use? Well, I look at her and I think, okay, she should have warm tones, first of all, but I want to put some pink in there, because my message to you is that you can put cool and warm together and get away with it. So that's why I decided to do that on her. Um, and whether I use permanent or demi-permanent depends on the palette I want to show you. Because in the demi-permanent line, some of the copper shades are different to the permanent line. At the semi-permanent line, you can't even have a demi or a permanent line that makes the same colours. So the permanent one on her is the level 8? Yes, permanent is the level 8 copper, but remember I did pre-lighten the hair. So now all I'm doing is depositing. Good question. Okay. Okay. Come on up, darling. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, uh, this to me kind of looks like a very classical haircut. This would be an entry to me that would go in a classical kind of category. Um, and basically, I think the most important thing is this kind of making classical looks look very, very modern. Your little graduated looks are never going to go out. A black skirt on the legs will never go out. But it's where they're cut to and the fabric that you're using that makes them modern, whether they're still or whether they move. This girl has incredible body proportions. Yeah? Look at her bust. Look at her bump. And look at her legs from there to there. Yeah? So there's something very pleasant about the aesthetics of that. Yeah? Um, yummy, yummy. You can give her a clap. I decided that I want to do a few foils around the face. And the foils that colour. Um, she did come to me with copper hair and um, I did refresh the regrowth. But the, way, the reason that she can get away with it, because it actually looks good on her skin tone, is because it's only one level difference than what her hair is. And that's why she can get away with having copper hair. So um, this was a level 7 copper with 10 volume. And just a little tip, if you're having problems with your red fading, um, sometimes it can be because you're using too high of a peroxide. So drop your peroxide and you'll have better results. So 10 volume, level 7. Cool. And what I'm doing now is just back combing. I would take a picture of this and it should look amazing. Yeah? Cool guys. So go to a nice beautiful pose for me. Do your hair's very messy. I need to really bring some energy into that hair. Cool. Cool. Yeah. It looks really great there, I look like that. Can you see the angle? Can you put your shoulder up and kind of get the... Oh, yeah? See where we're going, everybody? Yeah? You know, you can kind of do that. It's just a quick little fix. Cool? Yeah. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> great job. Okay. Do we have... Oh, we have a before shot of our beautiful girl here, too. Everybody's beautiful. Oh, my God. Wow, Sue, what happened? What did you do? I could have it. Okay. What we do, if you look at her face shape now on camera, what we're doing this is to amplify and put more energy into the cheekbones and to make the jawline look a little bit stronger through there. This is done by Karen, who's one of our members of the artistic team, as well as the wonderful people that have helped us backstage. Thank you, Karen. I think you've done a beautiful job. I like the areas that are very, very easy to shoot. You could shoot one side, it looks one thing. You could shoot it straight on, it looks another. Change it again. So me, there's a lot of versatility in this look. And I love the colour shades that Sue's done because there are strong colours in there, but they bleed. They bleed. Imagine it dripping from one colour into the other. It doesn't stop. It doesn't start. Because there's nothing pretty about that. There's nothing pretty about putting for something that doesn't connect on your eye or within the hair. My little tip for when you're doing colour like this, after Sue's done her colour, I'll always go back into where the foil was originally placed. I'll lift the hair out at 90 degrees and I will erase some of the ends. So I will take some of Sue's colour out on the ends, so all of these colours here look. All blend and all flow through very beautiful. The, the taupe, the copper, the blue are all in harmony. They're all not, they're not fighting and conflicting. Does that make sense? <laughs> it looks cute. What about the colour, Sue? Yeah? Okay, well there's an inspiration slide. Um... Do you believe? Yeah. So there you go. That's an inspiration slide. Yellow, orange, blue. So that's what I've done. Yellow, orange, and blue. So this is where I get my inspiration. A lot of times from sunsets, we can go back to my camera now. Um, sunsets, leaves, plants, uh, feathers, peacock feathers, all kinds of things. So you can see she's got the yellow, orange, and blue. So do you like? Yeah, cool. Thank you. Any questions so far? Pulling together. Yeah. yeah. So I tried doing it individually, and well, what's your secret? Yeah, my secret is you take them all out, you get the water running, and you get somebody with water on it, and you shampoo it at the same time. So you shampoo it. So and they run won't the bleed water. all together. Right, and you do it very, very fast, as quick as you can. And once you've shampooed it twice, you can then slow down. Right? So um, you just got to do it fast, as quick as you can. And I'll tell you a little story. On my NAR win in 2007, I actually did um, uh, violet and uh, green, and I put all these contrasting colours together. And without thinking, because I was creative, I did the colours, and then I thought, oh, now I need to rinse it off. And I was in a panic, because I'd put them colours together before. And I was like, ooh, 
Oh, so I'm like, look, let's just get it off as fast as we can. And I was like, oh, it's safe, but you know, it was fine, it was great. But that's how I did it, and so that's what I do. And I just take the foils out. Some people still leave the foils in and rinse, but the water, the coloured water is running into your foils. If you've got long hair, you've got to pick it up so that it's not dangling in the coloured water. Also, the ends of the hair will be a different colour. It's like what rinsing black and white. If you bleach and then you did black, you've got to do it quick, quick, quick. Great. And shampoo and water at the same time works. Thank you. Great. Any well, other questions, guys? Yeah. Yeah, Jay, oh, we have one here. Is there any for me or is it all about Sue? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your um, name? Kat. Hey, Kat. Um, when, <laughs> when you send your clients home and they've got bright colors and, like, I've had issues in my yeah. hair that with bleeding later. Same, same thing. When you send your clients home and they've got bright colors, the first two shampoos, they got to, you got to tell them, put water on your hair and shampoo it while the shower's running. Right, you do that twice, then the problem's not there anymore because the bleeding stopped. Yeah. It's like wearing a nice pair of jeans and you uh, release a lot, and then suddenly it's not as much fading. Is that right? The same thing. I know nothing about colour as you've gathered. <laughs> okay, we've got any more great questions in the audience? You have one. Yeah. This is a statement. Oh, a question. statement. What? Wow. Your commitment to colouring and yours to haircut. It's brilliant, very inspirational. <coughs> Oh, did everyone hear that? <laughs> yes, <laughs> we did. Microphone, Sherry. When somebody gives you a compliment, I love to milk it. <laughs> I think you guys are okay. <laughs> I, said, I, I, think, I think their, their work, Sue's uh, color, Damien's cutting, it's very inspirational. We can take this into the salon. This is a lot of this is like runway work. We can modify it. And don't think that we can't do this kind of work because we can. And if you want clients to come in that want this, you have to do this kind of work. It's brilliant. Yeah. Well, thank you. Your <laughs> thank you so much. I need to give you more, more questions. Is any more? Oh, we have more questions. <laughs> What's your? Do you let the hair dictate what you actually do to it, or? The when you come up with your concept, do you know what you're going to do with the hair first, or do you let the model's hair dictate which? Great you're question. Going to do? How are you going to feel next Wednesday at 5:45 p.m.? <laughs> <laughs> but you have to answer the question. I don't know. Well, you have to answer the question. Okay. But generally, you might be happy. But anything can happen next Wednesday at 5:45. Yeah. Does that make sense? So the point being is, is you have a concept which we kind of covered. If you go into something that you're very dark and you're unsure about, don't expect the team that you're managing or the salon that you're owning or a photo shoot that you're doing to have no direction. So do have a plan of action, but you know if there's an accident on the highway, I'm going to take another highway. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? So what I would do is stick to a plan. If the plan's too rigid, if it's too solid, and you need to be more flexible, whether it's through the hair, whether it's working with sewers or colors with my cutting, I'm like a bit of elastic. And I will stretch as far as I can, and in some cases it may snap, and that idea may never ever happen. But I never put myself in a box. My box is a whole, actually, it isn't square, it's round, and it's made of, um, it's potty, it stretches. So a great idea. <laughs> I do believe you should just have some idea. If you don't, you get lost. But don't be rigid to it. But I always try to work with the hair, like Sue says, in its best integrity, that I know I can achieve my end goal. And I'm not forcing it to do something that looks rigid, whether she leaves a salon or in a photo shoot. If I've got a job to do, I do need my tools to help me create that concept. If I don't have those, then I have to really fight hard to make the concept work. And in some cases it does work, and in some cases it's just a slap in the face. And it doesn't matter, I could cut my arms and my legs off, it would just never happen. So it's an instinct. Trust your own instincts. And sometimes your instincts you don't know until you fine tune them. If you want a great body, guess what, you visit the gym, don't you? So exercising your mind on a creative level would also do that. If you think you're going to have a creative day when you walk in the salon, by golly, you will. If you're feeling bored and unhappy, your clients are going to be a victim of that. Because I operate that way. Does that make sense? Trust your instincts. You'll know what you're going to do. Because what's inside of your head is when I speak with Sue is in here. But she's great at communicating things with me. We have a great relationship because we work together as often. If I had to work with somebody new, maybe we wouldn't be that compatible. Or maybe it might be better than Sue and it's time to change her. <laughs> when you find great people, stick with them. Because an island on your own, I'm included, is a very lonely one. 
And whether I'm in a photo shoot, I've got people that help me, I get the credit, but I credit them and they learn. But if you're running a salon, if you're on your own, it's a really lonely place to be. So your team are really, really important. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Do you know about getting experience working with hair pieces and those structures you had for your... Well, I'm going to talk about those in a moment because I've got a few pieces and I'm going to okay. do my Martha Stewart. I prepared it this way. This is my technique. There's my end result. Hair pieces is a whole thing. I'm going to cover that. That's a great question because I'm going to bring them out in a moment. We have another question here. Oh, okay. Um, as a session stylist, when um, you're working with photographers or a team or something, um, what do you find is something that makes them want to call you back? Like, what, um, what would you say is a great quality to possess or something that, you, that makes them want you to be part of their team? Really standing away from the crowd. I think you have to be professional. If you're looking for photographers, I would go on their websites. Most people want to book you because you've got something to show. They can be very reluctant to book you because you don't have an experience. How do you get experience if you're not going to give the opportunity? Yeah. So what you have to do is you have to kind of set yourself up for success. And what that means is I would often, the way I started was to call photographers and be very upfront with them. You know, I'm entering this category, I work in a salon, I'm very passionate, I love your work on your website, <laughs> and I would love to volunteer to be part of what you do. And if, so that's a way in, yeah? It's like, it's like associating yourself also with a manufacturer. So what you do is kind of do that. But what you need to do is brush all your skills up so you start get doing that kind of hair. So when you do get those jobs, you're prepared for it. So I go back to practicing the technique, being very familiar with all of my techniques. I want you to create a very 40s and 50s, 60s look. But I want it to look like Claudia Schiffer in the guest campaign 20 years ago. But I want it to look current today. Does can that make I, sense? Can I add to that yeah. as well? Um, I think you've got to deliver the goods. Yeah. That's what you've got to do. I love bright colour, but when I work for someone and they say, I want a bleach blonde, mm -hmm. I can deliver. If they say to me, I want a beautiful redhead, I can deliver. But if I went in there and they said, I want a bleach blonde, and I come out and do fun colours, then I've delivered the goods. So, like Damien said, you've got to be good at what you do. And, and in all, all areas, right? So that you can deliver the bleach fun, you can deliver the fun colours, you can deliver, and then they'll call you back. But it's usually a connection thing. You know, it's like being an actor. They're all starving in LA, but they obviously went to lunch with somebody, which is a connection of a connection of a connection. And often that can be. If you've got the talent, then obviously it succeeds you. And you need to kind of, you know, do some research of photographers in your area, Google it, express interest, make a phone call. A phone call's a great way of linking up to. Then make sure that you make sure that you meet them in person. I'd love to have a coffee with you. Then they get to see if there's a natural connection. They're going to be looking at you, they're going to be looking at your common things. If you've got work to show them, then that can be a door. But if you're a beginner, you've got to start somewhere. And there's always a way in for great appreciation and talent and professional. I'm always looking for great people. Because sometimes it takes a lot to cut to that level. And sometimes a lot of people get to that level and they give up and they've reached and peaked. So really it's a kind of a connection, but having like said, suit your skills here, being able to deliver. If I don't know those skills, I'm going to learn them somewhere and practice them on many, many things. So at least it's kind of going to help me get towards where my goal is. And I think also, um, in my opinion, in your career, whether you're starting or you're, you, you've grown, sometimes you have to do things for gratis, right? You don't get paid for it. And the reason you do it is because it's putting you in an, a new area and you're learning from it, right? Even at my level, I do things gratis, but I do things that I want to do and I know that will elevate my career. What's the next step, you know? Cool. We're going to release these girls. Girls, you can go away, thank you. With your hair, darling. And a lot of times we get asked, or I get asked, can I do that colouring technique on curly hair? Yes, you can. One thing I've learned as a colorist though, if you do weaves, a leave a piece, weave, leave a piece on curly hair and you go lighter, what happens is when it starts to dry, it just makes it look frizzier, frizzier, drier and drier. So what I have a tendency to do is to color curly hair in zones. So I'll choose a zone on, on the hair and color that area. So if you look where I've got the length, the length is on the top, so that's my zone, the top area. And basically what I did is I went through and did some back-to-back -back slices, pre-lined, obviously, then went through and did some back-to-back -back slices. And this technique I love to do on curly hair. What I do is I take a slice, 
And halfway down, I used the level 9 gold. And then the other half of the same slice, I used the level 8 copper. So I've split the slice up. The next slice I took, I, on that slice, halfway down, I used the copper. And then on the ends and the tips, I used the gold. So I alternated them. And it's really a good technique for curly hair. It can be done on straight hair as well. It doesn't have to be curly hair, but it works really well on curly hair. Then I also did lavender and blue. So halfway down I did lavender, and on the tips blue, and then halfway down blue, and on the tips lavender. Um, I've done this half and half, but the, where I got the technique was from was from waves, the light reflection on waves. And if you look at the light reflection on a wave, it goes light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. And what I did is I said, okay, when I do waving hair, I might go light, dark, light, dark, light on the wave or the crest of the curl. So that's basically where the technique was born. And then, of course, playing and experimenting with it, it becomes other things. So there you go. Cool. Congratulations for being shorter to longer. Yay, give us a little clap. This would be a great kind of category, maybe texturizing your texture category in our It doesn't always have to be curly. What is texture? It could be whatever you want. It could be straight, curly, whatever hair you've got. But to me, what the hair has simply been graduated. The hair's been pulled down quite heavy, so it expands angular-wise. Graduation is excellent for lifting up the cheekbone area, elongating the jawline, and making the neck look longer. Three fundamental face shape features on the female face shape, completely opposite to the male. All you're looking at is the jawline. Hair's been dried natural, don't mess with it, use it or lose it. It goes back to your concept, it goes back to your idea. Are you going to lose it or use it? Here I used it and I think she looks great. You should have seen her before, we don't have her before shot. She kind of gone from drab to fab. Gorgeous girl, thank you. Yeah, she looks great, everybody. Okay, so I'm going to leave her with the four slide for our next model. Uh, but let's bring her forward, if it is coming up. And, yeah. Oh. There you go. So um, clearly she liked colour, right? So I'm like, okay, cool, she loves colours. So that's what I'm going to give her, lots of different colours. Um, the first thing I have to do as a colourist is know that I can get her hair where I need to get it to. Because obviously underneath those colours, it's already been bleached. Um, so I need to know that I can go in and do my bleaching and the hair can handle it. So luckily for me, a lot of that old hair was cut off. I uh, went through and did some vertical slices on the side, some diagonal on the top, basically used a copper. You uh, talked a lot about shape and how that translates on film. Sue, yep. could you tell us a little bit about dimension and color and how that translates on film? Yeah, uh, very good question. Uh, color on film. Uh, if you a photographer does not light, uh, like you set up well, you will lose a good 50% of your work. So first things first is your photographer needs to know is shooting and the lighting needs to be lit for hair color. Second thing is that if you want to create a moody vibe from your shoot, because normally that's just pure white light. Um, if you want to create more of a mood, then you have to intensify everything by 50%. Generally, I lighten the hair and then I deposit my tones because then you'll see it. Um, surround your darker tones with lighter tones because then the darker tones won't get lost. For example, if you put purple or blue into darker hair, you will lose it, and you will lose it on film. However, if you put purple or blue surrounded by copper and blonde into darker hair, then you've not lost it. <laughs> Sorry, it's a personal opportunity. You never know you're on. Beautiful, I love this. Look at that. The so she says, yes, that's okay. So I did this to her. Um, I think a lot of times we get stuck into a box. If somebody comes in and they have blonde hair, we just think that they want to stay there. And I have learned to be able to say, forget what they come in like, because I used to do it in the salon. I client come in blonde and I keep her blonde. And now I'm very good at saying, forget what she comes in like, because this is what I'm going to do. This is what I want to do to her. So um, I did red, pink, and purple, and then did a base color all over. Um, on top of the blonde, and this is our result, basically. Stunning. The most dangerous thing a woman can do is to go from here with a length to here. Yeah? She's a mom, she's got a few kids. That's why a lot of people don't like cutting their hair, because they never go short enough. 
yeah? And in this case, I think she'll, she looks feminine. I think she either looks more stunning and more feminine than what she did with a bowl. Would you agree? So that's concept. That's awareness. That's the sense of balance to your world. And that's taken me a while to get there. I just needed a third eye, which doesn't exist, technically speaking, but it's up there with Sue and her wife. Fabulous. Our next one. Yes. Beautiful. beautiful. And do we have a bit? Oh, yes. there you go. Wow. Yeah? So here in this case, it's not a case of uh, how much you cut off, it's where you cut off. By having the hair dangling around where it is, it makes the facial shape look wider. And also it kind of looks, in my opinion, a little bit drab. Here, we've just taken the lens away, emphasised the fringe, pop some colouring, bingo, you've got lots of different areas that have kind of got different dimensions. Longer hair is softer, so it'll show more light. Shorter hair is stronger, therefore it'll be more matte. When you combine those on different heads, you have a dynamics that add more interest. Cute? So, can we show the inspiration slide and just stay where you are exactly? Oh, wow. Well, There's my inspiration wow. slide, and that's wow. what I've created on hair. Beautiful. Yeah. So, you've got yellow. Thank you. You've got yellow, orange, lavender, and blue. Cool, very beautiful set. That's what I look at and that's, I just think, oh, I could do that on hair. Gorgeous. Okay, you know, you've got to have your great haircut to go with the colour, otherwise the colour doesn't look good about the haircut, so it's a marriage. Uh, beautiful. Editors love those kind of stories. Local magazines love those stories. Local newspaper, network television, love to know what everybody else is not doing and what's going to be the next new thing. Do what everybody else does. We're, just, we're all just a lowly sheep following, and sometimes you're part of that. But separating yourself from the crowd drives your business, drives your creativity, and goes on and on and on. And I believe in that energy. You attract what you project. You want to do this kind of work, you only need to send one out a month, and she will bring five of them in, and not even more. Would you agree? Yes. Bravo, girls. You look beautiful. Thank you for being so Okay. I just want to quickly want to go through my little technique with the wigs and then... About 10 times. But to me, um, the question was how many times have I entered Naha before I kind of got maybe to the finalists. I've never won anything. Um, but the reality is, is it's beyond that. I mean, I think it's at a great um, awards because what it does is it helps me and many other people drive and have a goal. If it didn't exist, I wouldn't do what I'm doing now. So hopefully I'd like to win, but I'm never upset because I learned from my other photo shoots all that experience. But when I not, if I don't win, I also have them for great press coverage around the world. And I use that image to sell my business, which drives me from where I am now. So I really have a one of a friend, so it's a bit of a fake. I have been a shortlist and finalist many times, but it helps push me boundary-wise. And that's more important than any award or any trophy. It's what I do, what I feel that I think is more important, yeah? But it's a great avenue for everybody. It's open to everybody. Cool? You get a t-shirt. Thank you. Cool. Okay, I'd like to just bring my mug along real okay, quick. Okay, quick. Can I have my orange piece? We're going to speed up here a little bit. That's great. Cool? Yeah, Okay, I need you on a stand. Where's Kelly? Thank you. Cool. Oh, wow. Cool. So here's my model that I did. You can see the different tones in her hair. You can see what happens when it goes horizontal on this side. And then vertical on the opposite. So, what do you think? And you would think that those colours don't look good. But to me, they look fabulous. So thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Oh, beautiful. Do you like it? Did you see it? Come on, give her a big round of applause. Okay, talking about wigs, I just want to kind of go through the hair, yeah? Because it's real hair, you could pay 500 to 1,000 to 2,000, depending on how it's made. So if you did a piece, you're talking of a lot of money. I try to find different ways of using very cheap hair and making it look expensive. Yeah? So in this case, how am I doing on time, guys? I don't think we have very much time. I don't know. Janet. Five minutes for being solved. Oh, God. Well, we're going to get the thought oh, yeah. any second. I'm going to throw this around. But basically what I did is turn a negative of getting hair and using the eyes. This is nylon, okay? So I burnt it. Yeah? And basically what it did, it created these little dents in the hair. I'm just going to wait for this to heat up. 
and I do stand here like I was a little assistant, left it on too long, and the hair clients fall off. Would you like to take a throw back to the audience or passing it around? Anybody could do that for me? And what I did is, um, it's actually one of my entries for this year. So look at what you see now, and hopefully you'll see the entries of what I've done. And basically what it is, it basically creates dents in the hair. That's one way that I treated it, yeah? So what I did was to create lots of pieces. You've got to be patient, get lots of hot iron, and what you're going to do is create a crease in it. And what you'll do is you'll get the color Is it a real burn? It's a hair. real burn. This hair here is very, very cheap. It's nylon. It's not real hair. My attitude towards pieces is I get out of the box and don't think it's hair. There you go. Yeah? Next one. Maybe you could do that for me, Kelly. Okay. So what you do is you create lots of those little pieces and then you can build whatever shapes you want to build. Yeah. Actually, if you think this is great, I hate to say it, but I put a lot of work into this for many, many hours. Um, and Sue and I often work with concepts because Sue helped me with the colour palettes. And basically what I did was, um, it looks pretty amazing. What happens if you turn it that way? What happens if you turn it that way? We're going to talk about proportion and balance and everything, yeah. Uh, but basically what it does, it creates kind of like a very modern... My mum's Irish, or she was Irish, and I lived in the Irish community. And when I was a young boy, I used to go to the salon with my mother to get her hair done. It was like a ritual, yeah. And what they used to do, they used to do these crisscrosses, and there's probably a word for it. And they used to do all of these loops, it was like lattice work. So they used to go every week, and they'd, you know, stay like that all week. So it's very much my inspiration. Um, a little bit more period piece on the right model with the right clothes, with the right lighting, it does look amazing. So that's my dead piece, yeah? <laughs> so um, pieces can be very ex expensive, you can do another one. And we have a question there, and we probably need to wrap up. Great question. You'll be a great audience, yeah, give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> but the thing that I'd like to do, share with you with pieces and hair, like Sue's world is all about colour. It's more than just brown and highlights. My world is there's hair. It is a fibre. It can be stretched, it can be curled, it can have a lot of heat added to it. You can set it and you can colour it pretty much any colour that you want within reason. Yeah? Treat it differently than you've ever done before. Take those magazine tears, be inspired by around you, make your own look. Go in for the shoes, do what you do. You might get knocked down, you might learn from experience, but get up and walk forward and take that into a, a very positive energy. The more we do something, the more confident we become. Last question, is that right? Am I good on time, guys? There you go. That's <laughs> okay, what is the base of the raffle? Remind me, please. Cool. Uh, what temperature is that iron? I don't know. I don't care about temperatures. <laughs> See? As long, at the hottest. As long as it doesn't break up like I'm doing irons in a, in a heated um, iron, they are probably 420, 450. Uh, if it was hotter, it would take me so long to do that. As long as it's hot enough, I just want to burn the hair, which is a negative thing, yeah? But in this case, it turns out... Guys, um, you will be able to take pictures of our models out. The lights on them. The lights on them. Yeah, the light behind you is not good. Yeah, that light is really bad. Everybody's dark. Yeah, I know. Her face is dark.